So Lake Hanka, Pearl of the Primorsk Territory. The area is more than 1,544 square miles. The length is 59 miles. Impressive. In order to preserve the unique nature of the lake, a Russian-Chinese biosphere reserve was established 20 years ago. At the same time, please note, we are in the latitude of Rome and Sochi. Hanka is a very shallow lake, and the water here is very warm. Still, hot summer, up to 104 degrees, lasts for several weeks longer than in the central part of Russia. That's why tropical Asia representatives of the flora and fauna have been found here. And of course, Hanka is a bird's paradise. Although, it is now possible to say former paradise. The water level, which raised up catastrophically, made huge problems for most of the local inhabitants. Cormorants return from feeding. It means that there are fish here. On the other hand, the level changes and the species composition of the fish changes. In addition, a predatory Chinese perch was brought here. So, there are also problems with the fish. As it is known, not all waterfowl or semi-aquatic birds feed on fish. There are even among these birds. But here is a problem. There is a lack of plant food after the rise of water level as well. That's how these charming creatures with white beaks live. These black birds with white blades on their foreheads are called coots. They are similar to ducks. Nevertheless, they're not ducks at all. They belong to a completely different family, the rails. We are sailing to the island cordon of the Hanka Reserve, where we will live all these days. A few years ago, we could have gotten there by car. Today, it takes 40 minutes to go on water by boat. Ivan, that is, all the reeds which stick out of the water. This was the reed thicket before, and it was possible to walk there, right? Yes, yes, yes. Here was the road. As the main goes, they drove out by cars to Sivakovka area. So you could safely pass here, right? Yes, yes. It was a peninsula. Yes, it's also considered the peninsula Rabakon on the map. So, Ivan, wait, it's time to rewrite the maps, right? Well, yes, yes. It's not a peninsula, but the island of Rehoboken. Already an island. So, they built a cordon on the peninsula, but it was in complete isolation. Everything, products, Building materials, equipment can be delivered only by water for that time. The first resident, a nice dog, met us on the island of Reaboken. It was guarding the ripe Amur grapes. Well, it barked, of course, for decency, and then we became friends. Well, you're like in the fable, the fox and the grapes, right? Only you're a dog and grapes. World viticulture is rapidly advancing in the north. There are dozens of cultivars only in the Moscow region. And in this considerable contribution to the wild Amur grape, which is actively used in breeding. By the way, it is quite edible. Now, let's try them. Well, of course, you can't compare it with Crimean Muscat varieties, but quite tasty. When the frost will hit, it also becomes sweet. The cordon on the island is turned into a Garden of Eden. It's buried in flowers, a pleasing view with cropped lawns, but we are more interested in the wildlife, wild native plants and animals of Hanka. But the first superficial survey from the tower didn't reveal the presence of big flocks of birds. We'll have to act not only on the land, but definitely on the sea. The sea a sea of bird feathers. No, this is not what I see through the binoculars. The sea of bird feathers sounds like Hanka and one of the ancient dialects. This was the name of the lake because the game was delivered from here to the palace of the Chinese emperor. Well, now a rare bird can be seen only with binoculars and only from a watchtower. Well, we did find something. Well, for example, a rare bird, an azure tit. I really didn't expect to find it here on Hanka. The living area of this bilberry is very wide, from Western Europe to Middle and East Asia. 
but it is very rare everywhere. In addition, the Azure Tid is a great master of disguise. Despite the white coat, even in summer, it can dissolve in thickets in a magical way. But now the water is flooding the reeds, which are the habitat of the white azure. There will be no coastal reeds, and it will fly away to seek a better place. In all the guides, it is written that the depth of Khanka ranges from 1 to 4 meters. The deepest part is 10 meters deep. But now these figures can be rewritten boldly. Now if we mark here on the rocks and return in a few months, it would already be hidden underwater. Every morning the cordon inspectors take us to the places where, according to their assumptions, there could still be unopened shallows with Lotus and Uriel. But in vain for now. There is a tragedy of a giant scale in front of us. The incoming water changes everything, even the outlines of the banks and surrounding landscapes. And it is very important for us to understand what this relates to global natural cycles. Or is there an anthropogenic disaster? If we make the outlines of Lake Hanka from space 10 to 20 years ago and now, will the difference be large? I think that there will be a big difference, of course. Well, is there any worry among the locals? Well, they're probably already used to it. Well, we have such a people, they get used to everything. The most important thing is that the Chinese, in my opinion, became anxious finally. And because they also, they say everything is drowning too, and this incident is not good. I see that the Chinese still have more mountainous shores. There are more hills, so maybe they're drowned less. Well, how much less do you mean? The water level, it's the water level, right? It's, it always finds its bottom, so they're also drowning. Every evening we return to the cordon, and we always meet with someone from the local fauna. Someone lives literally side by side with us, but for just the time being, I did not come across our eyes. Well, please, the whole community is buzzing and buzzing, well, right next to our path. If people hadn't learned to make paper, then there would be no scientific and technological progress, no great world literature. This is a nest of hornets. It is made precisely of paper. And hornets, these are the largest, are the most stinging wasps. But, by the way, they rarely sting, only if they are quite disturbed or show some kind of familiarity. And so hornets are peaceful guys. True, they feed their larvae with protein food. They are predatory. And if you saw a hornet in a jar with jam or cut a watermelon slice, it is feeding himself in this way. And we found a baby mouse quite near the nest of hornets. This touching creature is considered the smallest rodent in the world. The weight of an adult animal is only 10 grams. These animals are very widespread, from the Scandinavian countries to the tropics of Southeast Asia. But everywhere they are quite rare, so we were lucky. But who will you will meet on our island, literally at every step? Spiders, huge ragworts, twice as large as ours, and their various young species. We see their webs literally on each branch. However, it's time for dinner and not only for spiders. According to the law of the genre, I have to eat all sorts of frogs, turtles, beetles on camera. But today there will be everything because for dinner we have a predatory carp. It's a fish. It's found in Khanka. What do you think? So? Cutting. Predatory carp. Freshly caught. Come on. Well, all the large reservoirs are tending to regression and transgression. They are becoming shallow. Then the banks are flooding and flooding. These are cyclical processes, which can even be calculated and predicted. But the tempo of the rise of the water in Khanka is frighteningly turbulent. 
Kanka has something to lose. 334 species of birds, 74 species of fish. There is no such variety of ichthyofauna in any freshwater reservoir in our country than here. Under the rapidly arriving water, the reserve disappears, and this is the only international reserve in the country. Who is guilty in this, and what should we do? Eternal questions. No, my heart feels. It's not just about cycles and precipitation. Tomorrow we'll continue our research. We'll study the depth measurements and see what has become with the reeds behind the island. This morning we left on the other side of the island. Here it is very clearly possible to demonstrate how the water in the lake arrives at a rapid pace. This place on the map of the island is marked as a beach. You can see for yourself what's left from the beach. There are trees standing waist deep in the water. And the descent to the water, going to the water was somewhere around 49 to 66 feet further. The water washes away the roots of the trees and the first storm brought down several at once, you see? They are all unfortunately doomed. Fish are also not happy with these events. After all, shallow waters where spawning takes place are flooded. There are no more thickets of aquatic vegetation where the young fish hid and swim. Habitual fodder lands disappear. The smaller the number of fish, the smaller the number of birds. Even aquatic invertebrate inhabitants of Kanka will suffer, among which there are many endemics. Flooding of the banks dramatically reduces the level of oxygen. Many organic substances enter the water. A faint smell of hydrogen sulfide has already appeared, which will only grow with the years. The natural communities that have been formed for millennia are being destroyed in front of our eyes. There is a variety of invertebrates, shrimp, crabs, and all kinds of mollusks that live in Lake Hanka. You see, I've been collecting shells here, both gastropods and bivalves, and of course the champion, the largest freshwater mollusk in Russia. They say it is quite edible. One, by the way, was caught alive. Here it is. This giant mollusk is called a Cristaria. But our next meeting convinced me that not everything can be generalized. Yes, local butterflies, shellfish, and spiders are much larger than their European counterparts, even if we are talking about the same species, but still not all. Who said that if God had meant us to fly, he'd have given us wings? Here is living proof, a cricket with the appearance of a mole. Sometimes it happens in nature, in living nature. This is a mole cricket. As a matter of fact, our mole crickets are the largest, oddly enough, and all the rest, especially the tropical ones, are much smaller. We are going to places that have literally changed in front of the reserve's employees' eyes beyond recognition. Previously, we had to make our way through dense thickets, scouring flocks of birds. Today, it is unclear how our inspectors are guided by the terrain. There is not a single island, not a single piece of reed, not a snag sticking out of the water. Now I'll get a pole, and you'll see the depth. Reeds cannot grow at this depth. They are doomed. Reeds form cane timbers. It's amazing biological system. And in this biological system, the birds and the fish feel comfortable. As soon as the reed timbers disappear, several species of birds disappear at once too. Well, what kind of lotus can grow there at such depths? Look, the whole pole went under the water. Here it is, the bottom. Pavel, this all happened in your presence. Yes, within three years, the rise of water goes up and up constantly. And then they'll fill the wart wall. What's it for? This dam is built in order not to wash off yeah. the village of Sivakovka, which is nearby. There's also one more dam. It was made last year and washed away too. 
Now it's already banked back here in three layers. So not only the village, but human lives are under threat. Well, yes, let's say that there is a Novokachalinsk village on the common Rybolov side, a half washed away. Remembering the delicate hint of the botanist Pavel Krestov, we asked, how is the situation there with the neighbors, the Chinese? After all, the state border is passing along Lake Hanka, and a third part of the water area is on their side. From the lake flows the only river, Sungacha, and all the other rivers carry their waters to Hanka. They would be going to dig Sungach, expand it, so that the water would leave from there, because they drown too, just like us. Pavel, what's everything drowning from? What's this? Is it ward walls? Someone said that there is almost... Well, as far as I heard, they say that there was some kind of hydropower station in China. Initially, they needed the light, then they switched to solar panels now. Yeah. And that's all. They closed this power station and this river, like they did the discharge to Hanka. That's all. And the water is coming from rivers. So they dismantled ward walls and all this went to Hanka. Yes, and water, water went to Hanka. Wait, if the water comes constantly from all the rivers, from all sources, is there only one river left? One, the Sungacha. So it's necessary to ensure the flow of water in order for all this extra water through a single river somehow. Well, this year they seem to collect together. Well, sort of, again, we're always not sure. So they're collecting, yes. Will it really happen or not? Well, no one knows. Now we know, the reason for the catastrophic rise of water in Hanka was the confluence of a few circumstances. Here, and the whole reservoir of the Chinese hydroelectric power plant, which was sent to the lake, and the clogged single runoff, the riverbed of the Jungacha, which should be immediately pierced to leave the water, and the meltwater with heavy rainfall, numerous rivers flowing into Hanka. We searched for one reason, but there we have several. A Soviet Japanese film, Dersu Uzala, was made at Lake Hanka. Famous Russian travelers visited these territories. All of them left very detailed travel notes. Descriptions of Lake Hanka, for us, unreasonable descendants, so that we knew how to restore it and how to return it to the wildlife. But I'm afraid for this purpose, it will be necessary to declare the whole territory of Lake Hanka protected. <laughs>